Just found this pallet on the side of the road. It looks like it's really nice wood. Let's take it and see. Like a glove. Look at that. Perfect fit. This is definitely one of the nicest pallets I've seen in the wild. So my goal is to turn this free pallet into as high value of an item as I can and then sell it for as much money as possible while still maintaining a good profit margin. So if I turn it into something that I can sell for $500, but I have to spend $450 in materials, that's not really a success in my book. But first things first, let's take this thing apart. All right, one down. All right, two down, I'm getting faster. I guess we're finishing this on the floor. Danger of working on sawhorses. Lovely. Whew. So disassembling that pallet took 30 minutes. I'm keeping track of all the time I spent on this project so I can do a final accounting at the end. I'm still not sure of the wood species, but I think we'll be able to figure that out as we start to clean these up. Next step, a lot of these boards have a lot of dirt on them, like this one, and I wanna clean that off. This is just a wire brush, and I'm wearing a dust mask in case this is dangerous dirt. Oh, these are looking so cool. I don't wanna to speak too soon, but some of it looks kind of like cedar. All right, I'm really excited to see what this wood looks like, so I'm gonna start sending boards through my planer. Okay, I'm very excited because I'm almost certain that this is in fact cedar. I wasn't sure at first, I thought it might be fir, but I left the garage and came back and it definitely smells like cedar in here. Okay, so we got this beautiful reclaimed cedar. What's the game plan? I really need to play to my strengths here. I don't think I'm the best person to make table legs. So what I'm thinking of doing is taking all of this pallet wood, gluing it up into one single beautiful slab and then buying some legs to highlight that tabletop. I think I can get pretty nice table legs for like 50 bucks. So if we succeed with our original idea of selling this for a few hundred dollars, that's still a very healthy profit margin. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. Let's start cutting. I don't have a jointer, so I'm just gonna use my table saw to get one flat edge. Hopefully we'll be good enough that I can flip it around and get a second flat edge. Let's do this. So now we have this nice flat edge, but if we line all of our boards up, it's not very wide. This would only make a table 12 and a half inches wide. So what I wanna do is rip all of them in half widthwise and then double this width. That's gonna give us a coffee table 25 inches wide by 39 inches long, you know, barring any extra that we cut off to get a nice clean edge. Finally, we got these two big boys to cut in half. These are so pretty, it almost looks like oak. Anyways, I'm a little nervous about this cut and I'm gonna do it in two passes, one at half height and then raise the blade all the way. Hopefully my job site table saw can handle this. We'll find out very shortly. Oh my God, this is so pretty. 
I want to use these for the ends. This is so nice. This one we might have to get rid of because it has the split in it. All these little book matched grain details are so cool. Check that out. I think we're ready to glue. So I'm gonna glue this in two sections, split it right at this book match in the middle. Wah! Big glue up to do, and the glue starts to set before you know it. Two, three, never done a glue up this big before. Four, five, six, seven, eight, last one. I'm also gonna have to push this guy down. There we go. Nice. That worked really well. Some of these guys just to pull it at a little more pressure. Not gonna get a ton with these quick clamps, but it won't hurt. I really need more long F clamps. I thought three would be <laughs> enough. I don't know why I thought that. I don't know, I think we'll get a good joint. I don't see any gaps. All right, I'm happy with this. It's pretty flat. We'll be able to plane out any inconsistencies. Got some good squeeze out. Wipe off some of that squeeze out before it dries. All right, it's been about an hour, so the glue should be dry. Oh, beautiful. Wow, this thing is, this thing is not light. This is gonna be a nice coffee table. All right, let's get it. Got some good squeeze out on that one. Now that we got both halves glued up, we're ready to plane them down flat. I am very excited for this step. A little nervous, this is definitely the biggest piece of wood I've ever planed, but we're taking a very shallow pass to start, so I think it should be okay. Oh, wow. Okay, that was a bit more aggressive of a pass than I planned on, but uh, that looks really good. That is super smooth. All right, let's plan the other one. I'm gonna be a little more conservative on the next pass. I didn't know if it was gonna make it on that one, but we did it. All right, I think that's good for planing. They're the same thickness, they're flat. I can finish it up with a random orbit sander, so let's glue these babies together. So I just set these up for a dry fit, and I'm happy that I did because I found out that the mating face between these is not flat. You can see it from this angle when I push them together. It's tight together in the middle, but then there's a gap on either end. Now, if I had a jointer, this would be an easy fix. I could just run the mating faces over the jointer, get a perfect flat face, and I'd be good to go. I don't have a jointer, but I do have a table saw, and the opposite edges are flat. So what I'm gonna do is take a super shallow pass on the table saw along the mating edges. I'm gonna do the same on both sides so I maintain a nice book matching, and hopefully that will give me two flat edges that I can glue together. Let's find out. All right, let's see if that worked. It's not perfect, but it's better. It's manageable. Let's glue this baby up. Oh yeah, getting squeezed out on both sides, which is what you love to see. I have to little by little tighten these and close that gap. Having some more F clamps or pipe clamps would be definitely useful here, but clamps are expensive and this is what I have. All right, I think that is good. Oh, beautiful, look at that. Woo, that is bulky. All right, 
kind of sand. I'm an- All right, after about 45 minutes, got this baby sanded up to 220 grit. It's super smooth. Now it's time to trim the ends. All right, let's hope this works. Is the circular saw powerful enough? All right, maybe it's the battery. So my cordless circular saw was having a lot of trouble on that cut, and I think it's because of these little old 1.3 amp hour batteries. So I bought some bigger ones. These are four amp hours, high performance Ryobi batteries. Let's see how they do. Oh my God, it's like night and day. That was so much better. I've had these batteries for probably three or four years. I've had these little batteries that came with my drill driver set. I cannot believe it took until now for me to get a new battery. <laughs> we have a couple of small voids here and here, and I'm just gonna fill those with this Alumalite Amazing Clear Cast Epoxy Resin. So you just mix it one to one. It's a bit tough to get this to flow into the crack, but luckily this stuff has a 30 minute working time, so there's not really any rush. Ooh, that was bold. There's a couple other small cracks that I'm just filling up with resin. Might as well make this thing as nice as I can. I'm not really looking forward to the sanding that I'm gonna have to do of this, but it'll be worth it. Grab my blowtorch, get these bubbles out. After two days, the epoxy is fully cured, so time for another round of sanding. I'm an- I'm an- I also sealed some cracks on the end of the table with epoxy, so we gotta sand that off as well. I'm an- I'm an- I'm an- oh. oh my God, safety glasses were hiding in there. <laughs> Now comes the part of the project that I have been the most excited for the whole time I've been working on this. I think it's really gonna take this table to the next level. I'm gonna use a chamfer bit in my router to add a bevel along the top and bottom edges. I think this is gonna look so cool. I'm a little nervous though, so I'm gonna start on the bottom. I don't know why I put on safety glasses just to flip this. Ugh. But it is heavy. Steady hands. Yes, ah, oh, that looks so good. Because there's a little bit of unevenness in the bottom, it also evens everything up really nice. We'll get a beautiful shadow line. Whew, love it. For the top edge, I increase the depth of my router bit because I want a more dramatic chamfer. And now that I have some practice on the bottom, I feel more confident doing a deeper chamfer. Let's do this. Oh my gosh, I'm absolutely covered in chips, but this thing looks amazing. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm gonna go clean myself off, and I think this baby is ready for finish. So I know at the beginning of this video, I said I could get some nice table legs for around 50 bucks. There were some pretty nice coffee table legs for $50 on Amazon, but the right table legs, the ones that really show off the beauty of this table, were a little more expensive. What? That was a close one. Ah, oh, these look so good. 
yes, this was the right choice. So these beauties were $126 after tax, but I think it was worth it. Let's put them on. So with that, the coffee table is finished. And now it's time to actually sell this thing. I'm a little nervous because I don't have a buyer lined up. We actually have to market this table, but I had an idea. There's a really nice art gallery right down the street from me. So I went inside and asked them if I could take some photos of the coffee table inside. And they said yes, which is huge. Having some good photos of this table in a nice setting will help bring out its natural, beautiful characteristics and help us actually get a good price for this thing. Shout out to Robert's Gallery. I super appreciate it. We actually might be doing a project with them now in the future. So talk to your local business owners. You might make some good connections. So with the time it took to take those photos, that brings the total time spent on this project to seven hours and 40 minutes. I assume it'll take another 20 minutes or so to actually write the text posts. So let's call this an even eight hours spent on this table. So my original goal was to pay myself $100 an hour for the time I spent working on this table. To do that, taking into account our material costs, the table legs, the glue and the finish only added about $8, we would have to sell this table for $934.55. Some people might spend that amount of money on this table. I think it's really nice, but I don't know if it's worth $934. I don't know, some people might pay that, but for a list price, I think that $600 will make it much more likely that we'll actually make the sale. That comes out to $58 an hour for my time spent on this project, which I'm still happy with, but now we actually have to list it and see if anyone will buy it. Okay, so I posted the table to Instagram, my neighborhood Facebook page, and Facebook Marketplace. Here's what it says. For sale, solid wood coffee table, handmade from a pallet found on the streets of the annex. That's my neighborhood. The table is 39 inches long, 23 inches wide, and 18 inches tall. Always important to give dimensions. The tabletop is one and three quarter inch thick. The wood appears to be a mixture of domestic hardwoods. Now, I know I said earlier in the video that I thought this was cedar, but in talking to some of my woodworking friends, we actually think it's more likely that this is actually hardwood, which is awesome. The pallet that birthed this table had a Lactalis Canada stamp, implying that it was produced domestically and used in the Canadian dairy industry featuring book-matched grain details, chamfered edges and steel legs, price $600, local delivery is available. Ever since I made the post, I've been really nervous that it's not gonna sell. It's expensive, I don't know if I would spend $600 on a table, and I judge my own work, I'm insecure about it. But I just got my first hit. Talia said, hi Morley, would you deliver to beep? I'm not gonna say your neighborhood. I love the table and will show my partner. Hi Talia, yes, of course I will deliver there. Ask your partner, are we gonna sell it to Talia? I'm so excited. And this came through the neighborhood Facebook group, which I was most optimistic about my chances of selling it there. So Talia checked with her partner and the $600 price tag was just too expensive for them. She was really nice about it. She didn't try to lowball me, but we were just in wildly different categories. So it's looking like it's not gonna happen. And then I wasn't getting any hits for a few days and I was feeling a little down. Is this thing actually gonna even sell? But then today I got a message from Michaela who also saw the coffee table on the neighborhood Facebook page and she really wants it. So she's gonna come by tonight and I think we're gonna make the sale. Fingers crossed. Yeah, so I found the pallet just um, near Fiesta Farm. Oh, that's so cool. I, we were both saying, like, I just wish I was so crafty and windy right now. This is where I actually built it. Cool. Are you happy with it? Is what you thought it yeah, would be? Yeah, yeah. I saw it a couple days ago on one of the Facebook groups, and I was like, this is so cool. Yeah. And I didn't even think to, like, do anything. And then you, she saw something else on Facebook today, and I was like, yeah. I saw this really cool table. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's like, you should buy it. Like, yeah. we're, we're moving. New York in a couple months. Uh, we want to bring something from like this yeah, neighborhood. Nice Toronto stuff. With yeah. Us, so. so this would be a good, yeah. cool thing to like keep with us. That's it's awesome. It's a good size that it's not too big because I'm sure wherever we'll be, we'll be Small. the smaller stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was hoping that someone would want it for that reason. Yeah. But yeah that's with the exactly story. Want it. Yeah, I like the. It's Canadian it's wood for exactly. sure. Exactly, and handmade. It seems like no one else has one. Yeah, this is perfect, right? Cool. It's gonna come to New York with us. <laughs> That's so great to hear. Okay, thank you, I'll see you soon. So Michaela and her husband bought the table. They're gonna bring it with them to New York, which is so cool. Michaela negotiated down to $550, which I'm still very happy with. That leaves me with a final hourly rate of $52 an hour. 
I found it really interesting that Michaela and her husband both saw the table posted on Facebook on their own multiple days apart. So that really speaks to the power of posting something over time in many different places. I hope this video was helpful if you're interested in making and selling stuff. If you would like to directly support this channel, I have a Patreon page. All of my patrons get access to an exclusive behind the scenes Instagram page. I was posting about this project in real time. So if you were a patron, you would have seen the whole story as it unfolded. I would like to give a special thanks to my top patron, my mom, Kathy Kurt. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.